Scots with soul we build this network. Scots and soul build this network on Scots with soul. Hey, yo, 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 folks! What's happening? And welcome back to the Indie Scots Scots with Soul podcast. I'm Cody, my dog, and I'm here again with my friend SM Viper. How are you doing, son? It's DM Viper now. Oh, so as it's DM Viper. Sorry, sorry, you've changed the name <laughs> so much. And <laughs> you were, I need to I need to stop changing my you name. Need to stop changing your name. I think DM Viper is what you should settle on, though, man. Especially with mm. your your lines table push. Do you know what I mean? How much you're enjoying that? Yeah. It goes with anyway. the old thing. It fits with the song. Uh, <laughs> since uh, I usually do a joke, uh, here's me stroking my pussy on the internet. Am I famous yet? <laughs> no, mate. You don't have a cleavage. <laughs> I can make a cleavage. <laughs> Hairy cleavage doesn't count. <laughs> it's not hairy cleavage. It's called it's called contour. I thought you were going to say I shave. He's <laughs> <laughs> like I shave my chest and I sit when I pee. Okay, just leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, first subject of this week. Um, we're we going to start with. I think we'll start with the top ten top ten games of the decade as voted for by Metacritic. So top ten. Because they've done uh, the top 10 games of the year and the top 10 games of the decade. I was pretty disappointed with who won the top 10 game of the decade. It's uh, probably like Call of Duty or Fortnite or something. It's probably something like that. I hold on not I get the article up because I've no type down properly. Excellent start. Obviously didn't they type it in fucking properly. The cat's been outside most of today, I think, and he smells like wet cat. Like you I think see. wet dog smells bad? Fucking wet cat is awful. Are you a stinky boy? I hate it when I type in something wrong when I'm doing the fucking bot and I have to do this. It's well annoying. Right. Are you entertained by trust? Can you see trust on the TV? Hey, okay, here we go. So the top 10 games of the decade, um, I'll start at the bottom and work our way up. Right, right at the top of the screen there, right? Um, I want to zoom in a wee bit on this. this is what I want to do. He's doing very well, guys. Yes, I'm doing I'm doing excellent, right? Uh, so Dark Souls for the PS3, obviously. Do you know what I mean? I had to make it in there. It was a mm-hmm. big genre-defining game, the very first Dark Souls, so glad to see that on there. Grand Theft Auto V, not too surprising. I had to make it on the, the list. Well, it's good, because the fact is, like, what, it came out, what, 2012, 2013? 2014, I think it was, it came out. Maybe yeah, 13. and the fact that it's, it's still getting updates and, like, pretty good ones. Aye, the fact that it came out in PS3 as well. That's where I played it. I played mm-hmm. it in PS3. I'd, I've not played it anywhere else. No played I played it, it... I've played it on Xbox 360, Xbox One, and I've got it on PC. I've got it for PC as well. Yaldi gave me a key. You know what I mean? So if we ever want to play it on mm-hmm. PC, I've got it in PC. God of War in there at number eight. Nice to see that there. It deserves a place in the list. Uh, Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, obviously, mm-hmm. another one. In fact, well, yeah, it came out in 2011 and it's still relevant. Mm-hmm. Bloodborne PS4. That's actually the the only Dark Souls game that I actually enjoyed because it didn't feel... Dark Souls, the controls are hard. The controls are clunky. Everybody knows that, right? And a lot of people find their enjoyment in that because they get to defeat that sort of clunky playstyle. Mm-hmm. 
Do you know what I mean? And that's where the enjoyment comes from. But Bloodborne just felt quicker. It was the... See the way you usually get a sort of hack and slash game and they feel nice and mm-hmm. snappy and stuff like that and you can do hunters of moves and they all blend into each other. Well, Bloodborne, you have to wait on your fucking animations and all that. It feels a bit slow, but it's faster than the other Dark Souls games, so I'm glad to see that made it there as well. But Dark Souls in at number 10, do you know what I mean? And then Bloodborne at number 6. So them having two games in the top 10 game, game of the decade, that's pretty that's significant. Mass Effect 2. I've not played any of them. You ever Neither played? have I. You know, it's like I actually have a couple of them owned, like keys given to me. Never played them. Like I really should, but I've like I've, I've never just gotten around to playing it. I uh, guess a lot of people give them shit though. Do you know what I mean? Like they're, I don't know. I've not played them. I've heard some good reviews and I've heard a lot of bad reviews, but I heard that Mass Effect 2 is fantastic. I heard Mass Effect 3 is fantastic. No, sorry, I heard Mass Effect 3 was questionable and Mass Effect 4 was awful. So it's like so Mass Effect Two was the pinnacle, and that's why it's made it own. <laughs> Probably. Mm-hmm. Red Red Redem- Red Dead Redemption Two. I'd say Red Dead Redemption One. I'd like, say Re- I'd I'd say our our DR One. Again, I've yeah. never played I've never played Red Dead Redemption Two. Red, I don't know the second one. I didn't play a lot. I, I really felt like um. It's because you spent most of the time being chased by the police. That's my problem with the game. Do you know what I mean? You couldn't escape the, You couldn't escape them, and even if you did escape them, when you went to the next town, they'd be back on you again. They'd remember your fucking face, and you'd have to go pay all your money to get the bounty off. You either getting chased by the police, or fucking paying them off. Man, it was just I felt it was really annoying. Whereas the first game, Red Dead Redemption One, I fucking loved that game. Played it maybe twice, maybe even three times through. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Then you had the red. The zombie version of the game that gave you another game to play after it, where fucking Marsden was cutting about the zombie. Oh, do you know what I mean? It was brilliant. R D R one. Yeah, I really. Do you know like I would, uh, well, this is an off sub, like off topic subject, but the topic of bounties, right? Are they not just really stupid? Because there's one crime you could just completely get away with, with the whole bounty system, and it's fucking burglary. Like imagine like I'm a bank robber, right? I go and rob eighty million. Uh, 80 million worth of cash, right? Right. And I stash it and I lay low for a month and I become wanted, right? And my bounty set at like 4 million, right? All I need to do is walk into a police station and go, hiya, paying off my bounty, bye. <laughs> well, you're stolen bank money. Aye, but no, like. No, that's not how it would work. They, that's but not they, how it they, would they work. did have they to prove did. that every single uh, dollar, like bill of that, of that payment came from the bank, which they couldn't do there and then. And you're like, well, f- I want to pay off my bounty. They kind of stop you paying off your bounty. So you, what you're saying is, you walk, you walk into the bank, rob the bank, and then you walk out of the bank, do it at the post yeah. station, and pay off your bounty. Off your your bounty. Bank money. <laughs> 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 of course, you need to, like you know, like you're talking like eighty million dollars for it to be even worth it. That's that's but like that's like um, it's like imagine the police is a bully, right? The police is just mm. a bully, big fat bully that can't rob the bank on his own, but he wants to rob the bank, and he, he can't. So he just like robs everybody else for wee daft things. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. oh, like you pissed on the corner, gives ten quid. Do you know what I mean? He makes his money that way. But if you rob the bank and you walk into the police station and you say, "Here, mate, here's a quarter of what I just earned," he's got to be like, ah, "Cool, I'm your man." <laughs> that uh, man's innocent. Don't worry about it. Uh, I'll make sure you've got an S up. Uh, uh, a uh, police escort to Mexico. <laughs> Just imagine that in a John Wayne movie, can't you? He fucking comes up on the bank robber, and the bank robber's like, "Whoa, Mister Policeman, <laughs> I'll cut you in." <laughs> it's like, there's like, I'm pretty sure, like, there's there's stories of that, like, of you know, people becoming really friendly with, like, you know, the sheriff or something, finding out, you know, he's a bit low on money and everything. They go rob a bank, offer him a million dollars, and he goes. It's like it never happened, pal. It's like it never happened, pal. Aye. I'd see if I was the sheriff I'd, in the Wild West. I'd be like that, man. Aye, I'd, I'd be like, <laughs> like, you have me enough money, I'll look the other way. <laughs> Kayla, I'll, I'll invite you to dinner for fuck's sake. Now we're getting to the top three games. Top three, third place is The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Now that... Considering that I'm, I'm only not even a part of the way through, you know, I've just arrived in, oh, uh, what's it fucking called? Crow's Perch, the Baron's place, Novigrad, no, the city. Novigrad. I've, I've arrived in Novigrad. Like, sitting like it's, it's like, but it's, it's already pretty good. I know, Witcher 3's, Witcher 3's 
so good, mate. It's it's fantastically brilliant, honestly, man. Mm-hmm. I was surprised it was only it's only third. Um, Zelda games I've never really been a fan of. Bre- but it's- Breath of the Wild was very good, not in the terms of like a story game type thing, more just the gameplay. It was just so fun, and it was so simple. Well, that, that's what games are supposed to be, isn't they? Like, really fun, so... Aye. On that site, no. Here. Oh, I bet because he's now on camera, he's not going to do it anymore. But he was, uh, he found a bubble, and he was trying to... He was playing with it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> he's like, I get that in my belly. <laughs> get in my belly. He's like, I don't know what it is, but I want it. <laughs> Like and the 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 game that won it really was like I was maybe expecting to see at this on a top ten like, the game of the decade right, but not at number one, The Last of Us. No, no, no. I mean, it was good, right? It was very good, but no. But... Do you know? What I mean, it was a linear story game. Yeah, it was a linear story game. You could only play it the one way. There wasn't any differences in the end. Do you know what I mean? There wasn't any complexities towards it. Yeah, once I, dis- I disagree once you've, with it. Once you've played the it. game once, you've played it, you know what? It's not mm-hmm. as if you can play it through again and get different scenarios or anything like that. Do you know what I mean? Like, my number one game of the decade is The Witcher, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Because of that. Do you know what I mean? Because each time you play it, you will have different experiences. You'll be going, like, I've played The Witcher four times. This is my fifth time playing it through, right? And then I've just finished another mission, and I'm like, I have never seen these lines of dialogue. I have, no, I didn't know there was a mission in here. At the end, do you know what I mean? Like, each time you play a game like The Witcher, you're going to get a different experience. You've got to get something new, unless you've played it twenty five times with the purpose of seeing fucking everything. Do you know what I mean? But you're going to have to sink what fifteen hundred hours into The Witcher, something like that, something crazy like that to see it all. Whereas you've got to have to sink 35 hours into The Last of Us. I just really disagree with that. Like, God of War, brilliant game, right? But it's very linear, you can only play it the one way. Mm. It was very, very, very good. But it came in there at 8th. Why the fuck is God of War at 8th and Last of Us at 1? I really don't get it. This is, you know, what you're saying with Witch is the same with Skyrim as well. You know, like, you can, I've, I've played... I, would, like, I was expecting know. Skyrim to be in the top 3, mate, 100%. I was hundred percent expecting Skyrim to be in top three. Do you know what I mean? It's it's a genre defining game. Do you know what I mean? It's one of those games that's fucking. I was expecting Skyrim and The Witcher three to be maybe one or two, uh, first and second, but I didn't know what. Do you know what I mean? I couldn't well, considering this like last decade was completely defined by fantasy, like what what Game of Thrones started two thousand eleven. Was it two thousand and eleven that started? I think so. I'm not sure. Hold on. Alexa, when did Game of Thrones first air? Game of Thrones first premiered. Date on the 17th of April 2011. Uh, 2011. Oh, yeah, right, 2011. Game of Thrones premiered on the 18th of April 2011. Okay, fine. Um, but, like, you know, this, like, literally this whole decade was defined by, by fantasy, fantasy, dragons, and, you know, all that, you know. Game of Thrones became the biggest TV show of su- all time. I and... suppose Last of Us is fantasy. Do you know? I suppose it is. It's a fantasy horror game. It's post- you know I, mean? I think. I think it's more post-apocalyptic because I'd I'd say like thing is zombies and stuff were in when Call of Duty World at War came out. You know, everyone was like, "Oh, zombies! Zombies! Zombies are cool! Zombies are this!" But like. The zombies, zombies have heads lasted. I can shoot and they don't shoot back. This is uh, fun. And zombies had have a lot, like I'd say, a much shorter lifespan than fantasy, because with fantasy you can do the whole okay Knights of the Veil vale type stuff, or you can do the whole you know magic stuff. I mean, let, let, let's see some of the fantasy. The... You can just keep making up stuff on top of the stuff you've just made up, and mm-hmm. but see with zombies, that's pretty much. The zombies. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it feels like we're zombies. basically just dissing the Walking <laughs> Dead right now, aren't we? Mate, uh, it's like <laughs> it's one of those TV shows that I like. Like I, I really dislike because I feel like it's pure formulaic, right? Here's an episode of The Walking Dead. Everybody's fine. We bit of chat about the last episode. Oh, blah 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 blah. Where do we need to do this episode? We need to do this this episode. We need to go to the petrol station to get fuel for our cars. 
Where's the nearest petrol station? Over there. It's filled with zombies. Ah, oh, shit. Right. First, first break happens. Comes back for the first break. Recap what's just happened. And then they're like, right, how do we get rid of those zombies out of there? They go over the plan. Second break happens. Comes back on. They enact the plan. Get the zombies out. And the episode finishes with them getting the thing and running away for the zombies that are doing their tails again. It's the same thing over and over and over and over again. You're like, holy shit, man. They could literally make an episode about somebody needing a shite. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I need a jobby. There is no toilet paper. I do not want to wipe my arse with my hand. Do you know what I mean? Like, we need toilet paper. And it finishes with the episode finishes with a guy sitting in the toilet like that. Mm. Cuts to black and goes, bloop. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'd <laughs> <laughs> be the first good episode of The Walking Dead in fucking five years. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I hate that formulaic shit. Do you know what I mean? Like, and zombies just lends towards that formulaic shit. Whereas fantasy, you can go wherever the fuck you want. Do you know what I mean? There's been some great fantasy TV shows this decade. Do you know what I mean? Like you say, there's Game of Thrones, um, there was Shannara Chronicles. Do you know what I, I mean? I watched that. There was um, sci uh, the new uh, Star Trek Discovery, the two seasons. Do you know what I mean? There's stuff like that. There's been loads of fantasy shit. Loads of really good fantasy shit. Yeah, shows. Merlin as well. I really like Merlin. I've not seen that one. I've not seen that one. It's on Netflix. It's pretty good. It's very BBC. Like, it is very, very BBC. But, like, John Hurt's in it, so. <laughs> Aye, but I think, I think the point I'm trying to make is, like, Zombies can get boring really quick. Do you know they what can, I mean? Yeah. And I really don't understand. I, I prefer zombie movies much. as opposed to zombie series. I, like zombie games are fun, both, but like you know, you're you're dealing with it. But zombie movies, it's more like oh yeah, here's like a have a have like a little bit where like you know, you know, two hours worth of this is the problem we're dealing with. Okay, fair enough. But like but you know, a, that's a typical movie. That's a typical movie, mm. do you know what I mean? It's, the problem with a zombie TV show is you've got the same same antagonist for the full thing. Do you know mm. what I mean? Even if even if the guy try to manipulate the zombies in his favour changes, it's still the zombies. It's always fucking zombies. Do you know what I mean? Whereas in fantasy TV shows and that, usually each season has a baddie. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It changes, the dynamic changes, so you get to see them solving a whole bunch of different problems. Whereas in zombies, they're just continuously solving the zombie problem with a tiny wee bit mm. of politics added in. And usually a short love like, story I'd, to, to I'd, fill in the audience. I'd love, I'd love a zombie series if what they'd done was actually show humans retaking the world. Instead of, this, oh, there's no hope left, there's always going to be zombies. No. Let's be real here. There's like, a really good one. There's a really good one um, that's very like that, and it's called The Last Ship. I think you'd really like that. It's about America. Um, there's this virus. It's a human made virus. It's no zombies. Mm -hmm. um, but there's, there's feral like zombies, but they're no. Uh, mm -hmm. And there's one American destroyer that's out at sea, and it doesn't get infected, and they're the other ones coming back, and they're going around about the world trying to like gain people from all around the world, the survivors and the knowledge and that, and trying to rebuild society. It's a really good TV show. I really enjoyed that one for that reason. It was yeah. it was a fresh take on the, the like, so, it was not zombies. It, like, the mindless it's a, it's a mindless horde. The it's mindless no horde, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's no zombies. Yeah, like did you ever watch? Um, was it was it like? Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and all that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, do you know the second one where the, you find that uh, that little, like, community of immune people? It, like, that was great because it was like, here, here's a civilization that bo was born out of this. Now they're dealing with the problem of, well, on their side, the problem is there is no very smart apes and the world now belongs to them. Like, you know, I, like they have intelligence uh, that parodies our own, but they also have a body structure that if we end up in a one-on-one -on -one fight, we lose every We're time. We're fucked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, this the really is like every advantage we had over apes in the in, in those movies. Those apes have completely showed up that gap. They're now on a level playing field with us, but they still mm -hmm. have their old advantages that they weren't able to bring to bear. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. An ape couldn't bring its strength to bear against a human because it, the human would just shoot it and the ape didn't really understand that. Where now the ape mm -hmm. understands that it can use a gun. 
to scare away. Of, do you know what I mean? One of my most favourite scenes in that whole film, right, is when they're in the forest at the very start. And it's, you know, you've got that human hunting party. They know they're not supposed to be there. And then it's just, you just zoom out from Caesar's eyes and he just raises his hand and just goes like that. And all these big apes just dropped in from the trees. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Can you imagine that, man? It's like fucking... <laughs> The thing is, I think it actually, if that happened in front of me, I think I'd make the sound you just made. I don't just know. watch it. Not, even, not even scream, just go, ah. ah. All, all, that, all that came to mind there was like, see, I can, see when you said that, all the apes jump out the trees, I was like, oh no, the Viet King Kong, man. <laughs> <laughs> the Viet King Kong. It's very tasteless, but it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> well guys I hope you enjoyed the podcast this week we'll see you next week with a new host <laughs> on a new channel <laughs> on Mixer <laughs> fucking <laughs> planet of the apes fucking Ho Chi Minh Trail <laughs> like holy shit man but um uh, aye, so that's the games of the decade can mm-hmm. I believe that a fucking a mindless horde sort of game made it there. I they've got some special zombies. Do you know what I mean? The clickers and the different types and all that. But wasn't that done before The Last of Us came out? Like that film, The Girl with All the Gifts. The Last of Us just done it better. Do you know what I mean? It was why those. Games, I don't know. The Girl with All the, the Gifts was pretty was, good. Like it was perfectly timed before everybody started to get annoyed with the whole zombie thing and all that. Do you know what I mean? Like I just didn't think the staying power would be there. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. When did when did that come out? Last of Us release date? Oh, I don't know. When did that come out? I think 2013 something like that. Last... Oh. Well, I think I think as well that was one of the reasons why uh, the game worked well was because people start like puts me name the last 14th of June 2013. Time. So seven years yeah. ago, the Last of Us came out. Seven whole years ago, right? Mm-hmm. People haven't played it in seven years. And seven years later in 2020, enough people have voted for that as the game of the decade. Really? Mm-hmm. Really? Do you so know like, I mean? You've got you've got games like that, yeah. But like, I think the reason it works so well and people remember it was because I think every other zombie thing around that time was all, oh, there was there was a virus, or oh, they're back from the dead. People didn't care about the back from the because it's not the fucking eighties anymore. We don't believe in demons and shit anymore. We don't believe things can come back from the dead. Uh, if, like you know. Infection was like that's you know, technically no too. We do believe things come back for the dead. We just don't know how yet. That's why we're freezing yeah, right. people and shit like that. Do you know what I mean? Well, but, but anyway, like you know, in terms of the whole like you know, we bury them in the hole. Aye. Dum 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 dum. You know that's what's gonna happen. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know that, that's 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 not a thing. Like we think, okay, infection was like the way it was gonna do, and. The Last of Us was new because it actually gave a difference, like showing the whole infection thing of okay, it wasn't a virus, it wasn't a, like you know a parasite, it was fungus, right? Uh, and like, fungi. and then people went and thought about it and went, "Fuck, you're right." Like you know, the mushrooms are fung- fucking dangerous, man. <laughs> uh, but like, like the, you know, the, the other uh, zombie thing that was really good this decade was fucking World War Z, like. I liked I liked the kind of twist they took at the end of like you know the whole zombies will only go for uh, people who are not ill, you know. So how do you how do you survive? Just inject yourself with you know some form of illness that's not going to kill you, and they'll leave you alone. Hmm. World War Z was pretty good. I did enjoy that movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was also filmed in Glasgow. Quite a good bit. Yeah. Todd Square and all mm. that. It was, I think it was one of the first, like, you know, end, end of the world films I've ever seen that finished in Cardiff. <laughs> like, that was really, it was like, where do we need to go? Do we need to go to Los Angeles? Washington? No, London? No. Cardiff. <laughs> I think it what? was made a case of, <laughs> right, let's, let's try and save some money here. Um, <laughs> uh, where can we film where do Glasgow we go? and Cardiff? We can, we can go to Glasgow, we can just get a couple of Jakey's a quid and we'll be fine, they'll leave us alone and that's the only people we really need to worry about. No, 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 what, ne- you know what the next film's going to be that's getting filmed in fucking Glasgow? Like Glasgow City? What? Fucking Batman. Batman's getting filmed in Glasgow? Batman's getting used as Gotham and do you know when I actually think about it? 
it's perfect. Like if you look at Gotham, it's that old kind of you know, you know the Victorian Gothic, Georgian the Gothic, Gothic architecture. And look at Glasgow. We I, like, have a lot of that. I, th- I thought about it, and I was like, "How did no one else notice this? How am I only just noticing this? Gotham is Glasgow." And then I thought to myself, "Wait, does that mean like the Joker's the Joker's actually from like fucking like Paisley or something?" <laughs> yeah, imagine that <laughs> Paisley Joker. Hi. Oh no, the the Riddler's fucking Burniston. This end. <laughs> 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 fucking Batman's fucking trying to f- find a Jolly Boy John's location. Have you seen Jolly Boy John? <laughs> uh, what Vanessa's saying, yes, Edinburgh in a way is more gothic, but in terms of like the layout, like Gotham's very grid like. Edinburgh's not grid. Edinburgh's not a grid. Edinburgh's nothing. Yes, it's nothing. Glasgow, close to a grid. Glasgow very square. <laughs> <laughs> Glasgow very square. Edinburgh very wonky. Like. Edinburgh conquered too many times in past. <laughs> <laughs> we had to make things wonky. Glasgow have no castle. <laughs> <laughs> Glasgow have train station. <laughs> Glasgow have train station. But, but, Conquering see, armies you, coming on train. <laughs> if, if if you if you go in if you go and play uh like the Batman Arkham games, right? There's a lot of times you need to go into tunnels and away from tunnels. And like half the time I'm in Glasgow I'm in a fucking tunnel. So I'm like oh, is that right? So like there you go. Like it, it's it's fine. That's cool, man. That's cool that Glasgow's been used to Scotland. <laughs> I mean, you're going to have Ben Affleck in your town for a while. Oh, is Ben That's Affleck it. still going to be Batman? I don't like him as Batman. Oh, no, wait. Maybe Robert Pattinson now. Oh, it's fucking Robert Pattinson. That's right. Oh, no, I'm going to like Do you know, no, 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 no. I'm, 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 I'm giving him a shot. I'm giving him a shot. Because remember when we, when we heard that Henry Cavill got announced as fucking get out, we were all like, I'm not too sure. Uh, I don't know. I suppose, and, you know, I suppose... I I suppose you're right. And you know, look at The Witcher now. Everyone's all like, there was only Witcher, and it's now Ger, and it's now fucking Henry Cavill. Aye, you keep going to call him Henry Cavalry as well, didn't you? <laughs> Henry Cavalry. <laughs> I fucking madcap man. He said that one time in my chat. I swear to God, I've never been able to call him his real name ever since. <laughs> um, but I talking about uh, Henry Cavalry. Hey, see what I mean, Henry Cavill. <laughs> um, let's have a wee look at this. Why are these? What? There we go. I got that one right. It's not either a poo there. There we go. The episode finishes. <laughs> 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 but I, um, models put Henry Cavill's face onto Geralt and the Witcher, and it actually looks pretty decent. <laughs> Why did he look like a dad? Like, like a dad? Oh god, his eyes are weird. No, his eyes are weird. I mean, remember, it's made by a modder, do you know what I mean? Like, we don't know how much experience the guys got in actual, like, graphic mm-hmm. design and stuff like that, and... It looks pretty good, I mean, it could be a pretty fun playthrough. Oh, no, no, it's, yeah. Where's, where's Sean Bean, eh? Where's uh, Sean Bean? Get Sean Bean as Vesemir, yes! <laughs> <laughs> That's who I You're gonna have to put what's her what's her face? That girl's name is Siri. What girl's name is Siri? I can't remember her name. Don't get mad at her. It's weird to hear Geralt's normal voice, but Don't get mad at her. Oh look, there's a good face, a good close up. I'd say that looks pretty fucking good, mate. I'd say that looks pretty fucking sweet. Mm -hmm. Do you know actually now I think about it, right? Films and TV, it wouldn't be bad if you made a fantasy genre show that they had American accents. Like it's it's not like not every fantasy show they're not gonna speak you know British. You know, like have some variety. Aye, aye, like like it's always either like a Nordic accent, a British accent, or a Spanish accent. Have there's you ever the, seen Have you ever seen Spartacus, the TV show Spartacus? Yeah, yeah. They, they had used, this New Zealand no, stuff. No, that's because Manu Bennett is new. He's new. He's a New Zealand. Yeah, but I, I was fine with the New Zealand stuff, but like that's 
But that was like, oh, the Romans and their that. I was like, right, okay, fair enough. But they were all using you know? their own accents. Do you know what I mean? They, mm. None of them were trying to put on accents. That's one of the reasons I liked that because you've got so many different ethnicities and different accents during the Roman Empire anyway that are all lost to history. You right. might as well just try and represent it by just letting people use their normal accent. Prepare your anus for Barker. <laughs> <laughs> John Hanna cutting about wee's Glaswegian accent in that as well. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> oh man. Oh. Like, but even like I like I do this in my D and D games, right? Is if I have like different races have different accents, like the dwarfs are Scottish because this kind of just suits them. And dwarfs, the elves, the, a lot of people are putting Scottish people as dwarfs anyway. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like Lord of the Rings cast Billy Conley as a king dwarf. Do you know what I mean? Stuff yeah. like that. In the Witcher, the dwarfs are all Scottish. I dwarfs. Mm-hmm. I'm fine with dwarfs being Scottish. I'm fine mm-hmm. with. It. And then, like, you know, I, I cast elves as the, you know, very posh, high people. They speak like their elegance is... They're the fucking you know, English. Mm-hmm. Posh but, like, No, but this thing, like, with, like, human commerce, you know, I speak like... The stereotypical the English, you know? obviously, when I say that, it's the stereotypical yeah. English that you know? people yeah. bring in mind, that, that British guy. I, 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 th- I think of the elves in Lord of the Rings, basically. Like, you know, they're taking the hobbits to Isengard, you know. <laughs> and, you know, like... Oh, you know, if I'm doing the the humans, I'll speak like a fucking Scouse accent or something, you know. <laughs> uh, and like, but with like gnomes and no, gnome, like, imagine like, they made oh, elves or oh, Geordies. <laughs> <laughs> Why I? You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Why I? Do you watch Love Island? <laughs> um, like, but like, you know, like with um. With uh, goblins, I try, I tr- I try and do an Australian accent. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know, I know when I get when they finally meet, um, like gnomes. I feel like you need to British. try a Australian accent now. About you, well, Australian accent's fucking terrible. <laughs> 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 but this is Turk. Hey guys. <laughs> um, uh, like I know when the my the party finally meet gnomes, they're going to be American. You know, I've tried to do Irish accents, never worked. And you know, there's I've split some Russian accents and stuff in there, you know. But it gives Russian variety. accents are nightmare, man. When you speak Russian, you always sound like you'd be racist. <laughs> it's like, oh no, we are now sued. <clears throat> Mine yes. No. Ah, uh, like Russian is probably the most the most butchered accent attempted by most people, I feel. But here's here's the next thing though, right? You get those people that do all these accents, right? You'll never find a white person trying to do a Chinese or Japanese accent because they cannot ever do it without being called a racist. Because it kind of is kind of true. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> white uh, people cannot do that kind of accent. Mm-hmm. It just <laughs> it doesn't I work. I do agree with you. <laughs> uh, yeah, but like you know. If, Hear your creators, give us some variety, you know, make the world feel bigger. Yeah, aye, like just make up a cool world. Do you know what I mean? Stop mm. putting zombies in it and giving us the same problem 25 million times ago over the span of a game. Do you know what I mean? Like, do you know, there, there was, oh, I can't remember what TV show it was, but it was about the slave trade, right? And it was these guys fresh off the boat. That's what really weird. And um, these guys, just, like, you know, Straight taken off the boat, you know, put into sold sold at the plantations, right? And they spoke with fucking British accents. And I'm like <laughs> I'm sorry, but would it not make more sense for you guys to have like the deepest African like, you know, whatever region of Africa that you're from, would it not be like the easier to put the most deepest because it mean be more believable? Like, you know, but then at the same time, it's just an accent. Do you know what I mean? Like, sure. as long as but it, like people who were talking, like, um, look at Black Panther, right? And you know, Chadwick was it Chadwick Boseman? Is that his name? I don't know his name. I don't know his name. King, but he, King, he was King good T'Challa, at... Chadwick Boseman. Like he's he speaks with a American accent, I think. And he said, "No, I, I used the the African because it was like, why would?" You know, why would Black Panther speak like this? You know, that was more of an expert mind than that was, but okay. <laughs> um, but like, and he was like, you know, it makes sense. He's grown up in Wakanda, therefore he speaks with a Wakandan accent. 
Uh, yeah, I suppose. Was, I suppose you're Kill, right. Killmonger grew up in Atlanta. I think was it Atlanta. I, have, I need to rewatch this film. He grew up in America, so he speaks with an American accent. But see, like in those historical ones where you've got like people that are the melting pot Back- societies. Do you know what I mean? You've got people for coming up from all over the fucking place. There's. I, I really feel like there's no, there's no need to try and get every accent correct. Whereas if your movie is based around about a guy that comes from a certain place in Africa, it totally makes sense to make people speak mm. in that one accent. Do you know what I mean? To give that place that you're trying to defend, trying to, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, to get more substance and stuff like that. But see, like, in these TV shows, I really just, I really feel like the accent does not have as much of an mm. impact, do you know what I mean? Because there's so many people from so many different places. Like take Spartacus, for instance. You've got Spartacus, who's from Thrace. Um, mm-hmm. Crixus from Gaul, who's modern-day France. Uh, is that modern-day France? Aye, Gaul is France, aye. Um, oh, okay. Gaul is modern-day France. Uh, you've got Gannicus, who's from probably the British Isles, because he's a Celt, maybe even uh, like Aquitaine or something like that, uh, Brittany. You've got people from all other places, you've got people from Africa, do you know what I mean? And they're all just using mm-hmm. their own accents and they're sufficiently different for each other that you can just be like, right, okay. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's the, Af- the accents are not correct, but at least they're different. At least they're on no American, do you know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. But I like if you're going to make a movie based on a movie, a 90 minute, two hour piece about a certain guy for a certain place, aye, that guy needs to talk with that accent. You can't talk with an mm-hmm. American accent, you're right. Yeah. And then there again, there's also some uh, actors that completely butcher the accents. You know, there's, oh God, was it Mel Gibson? He pretty much butchered the Scottish accent. <laughs> I, it's one of the movies I really didn't like. He shoots bolts of lightning from his arse. <laughs> <laughs> um, see that movie, Egypt, Egypt's God and Kings? I really didn't like that. They cast, Gerard, they cast Gerard Butler as an Egyptian. Oh, he, uh, yeah, he spoke in his Scottish accent or something. Ah. He was like, yeah, it's like, it is my time to become king. <laughs> I'm like, okay, calm down, fucking Leonidas. Like, <laughs> See, the, the Scottish accent did work very well for the Spartans. It did. You know did. what I mean? But yeah, this you know, for, is Sparta. Uh, we've, got that, we've got that intimidating, when you put it in a deep voice, moan then, you prick. We've got that intimidating sound to your voice, do you know what I mean? Whereas, mm-hmm. you, you hear an English guy say the same thing. I'm saying ter- stereotypical English guy, do you know what I mean? Like, Come on then. Come on then. Come on Pulley. then, you pretty. <laughs> Sometimes Ooh, you just find yeah. it fun. Yeah. Millwall FC. I seen fucking a meme man. It was like, if cunts have got to get drafted, why don't they just draft the Millwall section? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Send them away. Do you know what, actually? Um, God, do you know the, the the terror attack on London Bridge? I actually just realised there's been more than one. The first one. The one that happened at night, I think. I don't know. There was, I remember there's, there's been two. There was one that happened at night and there was one that happened in the daytime. I think there was one at night. There was a story of a guy who got stabbed on the bridge and it was because he went to fight the, uh, the guy who was attacking. Mm-hmm. And apparently eyewitnesses says he actually ran up the, up the road with his pint, right? And literally shouted, "Come on, then, Millwall FC, you fuck!" <laughs> and then, like, but and then apparently, like, Millwall sent him like a full season kit, a full home kit, like a season ticket. And then his friends got him a book called "How to Run Away for Dummies." <laughs> I don't think Millwall should be endorsing violence like that. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, like, like. It's there's, there's just it's just the, the mentality of some people. But it's that's like, that was England's own Smito event, pretty much, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Mm. Get some fucking glass region just kicking fuck out an Arab in an airport, and then you've get that guy. Who no, no, he, he didn't kick fuck at him. He kicked him in the balls. Kicked him square that's in the what nuts. happened. Kicked him square in he the broke nuts. his foot doing it. Like it's. Thank oh, for, for my I love it. Camera, I'll... by the way, or you would be seeing that the full time. <laughs> <laughs> Every fucking time. It, I'm not gonna lie, it's is <laughs> is genuinely one of my favourite stories 
to ever come out of Glasgow of someone tried to attack our airport and it didn't work because they <laughs> fucked up. One of them caught fire and whilst he was on fire, a standby who was having a cigarette came, kicked him square in the nuts and broke his foot. <laughs> 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 like is it is it just not just it's one of those Scottish stories I've ever heard in my life. It's almost uh, like something you've got to find in like Scottish Twitter in twenty years from now, do you know what I mean? Like find right. the true tweet. Do you know what I mean? Right. And it's fucking Man sc- breaks his foot taking <laughs> terrorist in balls. <laughs> Const- we're like, nah, it can't be that one. <laughs> no way. <laughs> but I uh, fucking Smito, man, I wonder what he's up to now. He's probably back at fucking just doing his normal job. Everybody's forgot about his heroism. Not me. I remember Smito. I remember. <laughs> um, but then right. again, like, have you seen the fucking song that's been going like mental on, like, online? It's like this. It's just this like Australian kid going Tortinos, Tortinos, hot pizza rolls, Tortinos, Tortinos. Like, it's this is what we're entertained by. We're entertained by original shit. Do you know what I mean? And somebody comes out with something original and different, people are going to like it. Do you know what I mean? Because like, like we were talking about earlier, the big mainstream companies, they're like, that, oh, I see something that worked for somebody else. Spam button! Yeah. Let's remake every movie that was remake. made between 2000. Remake! Whereas some guys like that, nobody's heard the Tortilla song. Or what song was it? Do you know what I mean? Like It was like, Tortinos, Tortinos. I'm going to find it. Hold on. Nobody's heard that yet. So, I mean, that's why the reason's music is always so fresh. It's because people are like, they need to write new shit. They can't just sing the same song all the time. Whereas game developers and... Oh, it was re- it was Rekid who made it. Ah, oh, fucking Rekid. I love Rekid. Would you rather have dick fingers or bow toes? Madcap asks. What a weird question. But definitely dick fingers, mate. Definitely dick fingers. <laughs> Only in one hand. Do you know what I mean? So as I was near, like, so as I could eat with my other man. Do you know what I mean? Dick fingers, definitely, go. mate. Dick fingers. 100%. Yeah, dick fingers because it wouldn't hurt every time I walked. You get hit in the dick, it's only sore, but if you get hit in the balls. <laughs> they must be new or something. They look what I mean? horrible, just... man. They look horrible. Just get the cheese out it. <laughs> so, I uh, what, what were we talking about that song for? <laughs> I don't know. It was just it was like that's what people entertain with now, and it's just that's what we kind of have to, you know, we're easily entertained. So just kick us, just get a guy to kick someone in the balls, and we're fine. Botto Madcap says bottles are better because you can hide them. No, I mean think about it, right? Think about how bad a stubbed toe is, Madcap. Right. Oh no. And then think about how bad it is when somebody hits you in the balls. Right now, every time you stub your toe, mate, it's going to be a stub toe plus a ball kick, and the one fuck that, fuck that, geezy dick fingers, geezy dick fingers. Mm-hmm. I mean, usually you'd probably hear people say something like, "Oh, eh, oh, you get to fucking diddle everything." Do you know what I mean? Diddle, 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 diddle. <laughs> <laughs> but no, just fuck having bottles because stubbed bottle does not sound fun. The bottle does not sound fun at all. Does not sound fun. Just wear steel toe cap boots, it's fine. Steel toe cap boots work when something you drop something on your toes. They don't not work when you when, kick something. They don't work when you kick something because you kick something, the steel stops and your toe still goes bum, right into it. It's not as bad as kicking the door on its own, but it's still fucking sore. And it would just multiply it if that big toe was a big ball. So Do you know I used to I used to, I used to think that steel toes used to go over your toes, and I used to never wear steel toes because I'd I'd be terrified one day that something heavy enough would run across my feet, and the steel would just go. <laughs> there's my toes gone. I had to get my steel toe caps cut off my feet, literally because I dropped a story cheater on it. Dropped a story cheater right on my foot. Broke my metatarsal bone and broke like three bones in my feet because the steel toe cap had crushed and on my foot and it actually made the injury probably worse because it focused mm-hmm. its focused its energy into a straight line bum right into my foot man that took me six or seven months to get back to work at that that point I remember working in the office for fucking ages 
second year apprentice like that to tradesmen. You need to go down that. You need to go do this job. You need to go do this job. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> Sitting in the office, man. I like. I can just imagine, like, fuck that, fuck that, being the bottles. Nah, mm. nah, nah. Bottles don't sound fun. <laughs> but I. Let's change subject. <laughs> but that means if you get a, think about it, right? Imagine getting a finger cut if you had dick fingers, like a like a paper cut if you got dick fingers. No, no. <laughs> I don't want to. No, I don't want to think about that. No. Um, right, we're going to talk about the space cookies because astronauts aboard the ISS, the International Space Station, have for the first time ever cooked cookies in space. Space cookies. It's disappointing, but because they're not actually allowed to eat them, they need to send them back to Earth so they can do more research on them. You know, that is one of the things that I hate. Like, I used to, like, when I was in high school, right, I helped out uh, doing one of the, like, charity bakes, and we made, like, 40 to 50 batches of cookies and uh, cupcakes and stuff, right? Do you know how hard it was? The whole floor smelling like cookies and cupcakes... I'm not allowed to eat any. Oh, and that does not, that like, does not sound it's, fun. It's not fun. Vanessa, would you date someone with a Fife accent? I don't think anybody would date somebody with a Fife accent. <laughs> Cunts cutting about like that. I'm for the Kingdom of Fife. Kingdom of Fife. Hmm, the Kingdom of Fife. But aye, let's talk there about is only scene. There is only five men in, who are from Fife that I believe can get any woman, and it is the boys in Glory Hammer. An absolute Scottish. Hmm. Oh yeah, he's no faith faith, but you know, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's face somewhere. Uh, it's face somewhere. Some somewhere chukterish. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, ISS astronauts baked history's first ever batch of space cookies using using the zero gravity oven. Sadly, the Sorry, astronauts like weren't allowed to taste the cookies before the batch was sent down to Earth for further research. Can you imagine that they were actually space cookies baked in space. Holy shit, mate! <laughs> 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 My mind is blown. But you could even actually, then, just look at, you could be yeah, high as like fuck, weed. just floating about. Instead of <laughs> feeling like you're floating about, you're actually floating about. <laughs> but holy shit, man. Um, if you were wondering what astronauts aboard the International Space Station were up to this holiday season, you'd be happy to learn <laughs> that they were they were enjoying their own festivities and baking history's first ever batch of space cookies. What are you giggling at? That woman's face is bigger than her head. <laughs> <laughs> Say that, madcap, <laughs> madcap man, straight into chat. Not been here now. We only like ah, him. Here I come. <laughs> Drop kick that <laughs> chat. As reported as the associ- by the Associated Press, a special zero gravity ov- zero gravity oven was sent to space sent to the space station in November, so the astronauts could c- conduct some delicious experiments in zero gravity baking. We made space cookies. And milk for Santa this year, and that's astronaut Christina Koch with a massive face. Um, tweeted posing with one of Christina the Christina Koch with a massive face. <laughs> um, with one of the tightly air sealed space cookies. Happy holidays from uh, at the space station. So, not much known about the space based chocolate chip cookies other than the fact that they don't look that appetizing. Did they know? Nah, they look a bit awful. They look a bit burnt, don't they? Uh, I'm sorry, but that just looks like weed. It looks like you just made space cookies. Ah, it looks like you've just like kind of had a big massive bong hit, not even finished all the weed that was there, and then just um, vacuum packed it and said it was a cookie. That's what it looks like to me. But aye, so pre-made dough was used to make the bookie, uh, make bookie set, which <laughs> took three <laughs> days to arrive at the ISS, and this. So they sent a fucking a rocket up. They, they could they had just been for cookies. That, that must have just. They, ah, no. mm. Do you know if you refuse to believe they sent a rocket up just for cookies? You know the climate change is getting that bad, and we're just sending rockets up for cookies. Zero gravity, a cylinder-shaped insulated container contain, designed to bake goods in an extreme environment like that of the ISS. The oven holds food steady while it bakes, and later cools it on a built-in cooling rack. Because microgravity makes convection difficult, the temperatures needed for baking are generated via electric heating components similar to those found in a toaster oven. A pocket of heat around the food inside the insulated container allows the dough to bake. 
Hmm. So uh, that's that's the one thing about that. that I really you... wanted to know is how does the fucking oven work? Do you know what I mean? Could they not, right? The, you know funnel cakes? Yes, I know funnel cakes. That, that like weird like spiral thing, right? Mm-hmm. Couldn't like if you spin something fast enough, it'll get hot, right? Mm, mm, the, the speed well, you would have I, to I, spin I, a cookie to cook it, but I, I guess it would it's fall not the apart. Same space. I guess it's not the same in space as well, considering you need air of resistance to make it hot, don't you? Yes, you need the, you need the friction to make it hot. Aye. But you could put you could put air in a container and spin it. Mm-hmm. And the container, but like the speeds, the speeds you would need to do it are crazy high. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, your cookie just fall apart if you were spinning it. Do you know what I mean? But like, I, I don't, I still don't get how they done it. Like, it's a, like a long cylinder insulated, and it just, they just heat the cylinder. I feel it sounds as if there's a heat element. It heats the air when about it, and the thing just floats in this pocket of air. I don't know. I don't know. But it also begs the question... Become a, wait, I'm looking at that. That looked a bit flat, doesn't it, that cookie? Um, I don't know. Because if that was the case, wouldn't the cookie be a ball? It looks more ballish to me, but it does look more like a ball to me. Oh, my major new tab was... Straight off someone's toe. Ah, it looks awfully ball, awfully ballish. Uh, it does, actually, yeah. No her, look at it. her face is bigger than her head, man. <laughs> Why did he not just take his glove off? Yeah, why did he have to keep the glove on? <laughs> ah, there you go. Space cookie. Just looks as if they've poked that right but, out of bum. Like, what are they going to study? Like, How convection use... works? Because uh, the astronauts obviously don't cook food in space. They don't eat hot meals. Do you know what I mean? So Would it not be better to send the oven back down then than the cookie? No, because they're probably going to be cooking hunters or stuff in it. <laughs> <laughs> Picks a question. How'd you get it back to us? Just drop it. <laughs> <laughs> Open the window on the ISS. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I bet, I, I bet it's got raisins in it, the fucking savage. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I like my cookies with raisins in it, man. Yeah, like I don't mind it. Oatmeal I'd, and raisin cookies are fucking uh, amazing. Aye. Raisins, are, raisins are the business, man. That's the shittest cookie I've ever seen. Aye, but it's the first cookie that was ever baked in space, madcap. Do you know what I mean? Like, give them a break. <laughs> They're astronauts, not fucking chefs. Um, we've got to switch subject anyway. Um, what are we going to go on to? Let's and I was thinking, imagine if Gordon Ramsay went to space, tried the cookie and went, ah. It's fucking awful. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're sending it back to Earth for. They're sending it down to Big Gordon. <laughs> Gordon rate my space cookie. <laughs> but aye, here's this new Panasonic VR headset. Looking at it, looks like some sort of steampunk goggles or something, doesn't it, man? Looks pretty cool. Oh, mate, I've seen cosplayers walking about with them. Apparently the cables, the cables are annoying for people. Um, Panasonic has un- uh, unveiled its reference reference models of a new VR headset designed at CES, one that's smaller, more form-fitting, and as The Verge pointed out, looks like steampunk fashion glasses, instead of oversized ski instead of oversized ski goggles. We have something that looks right at home in James P. I don't know who that is. Um, there are two eye holes instead, instead of one big visor, and the cushioning looks similar to swimming goggles. Earbuds are located at the rear of each arm, but detached uh, so they can use them for the, the ear pop properly. It's a decent design, do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know how the two screen thing will work though. Obviously they've got it working to a good degree they're happy be. Do you know um, what? I don't want a VR headset like that. I want sunglasses that have HUDs. Like, I can go on my phone and go, cool, I'm going in this direction. I'll go, all right, cool, I'm going to show you directions through your glasses. Or, like, I can I can be looking at a sign in Chinese and it'll translate it to English like that. You know, that's what I want. Mm. I don't think we're ever going to really get that. Do you know what I mean? Like the Google <laughs> that's gla- the Google Glass you put. <laughs> like the Google Glass came out and it didn't really do as well as they thought it was going yeah, to but Yeah, but it, it was because it was so expensive. It was like eight hundred pounds. It's one of those things, right? It's one of those Hi, things. 
what was that? Tim and Joe. Just shut up, please. Um, aye, but it's one of those things like, uh, do you know what I mean? Like, see, based, uh, these sci-fi TV programs and stuff like that, they've been, like, coming up with these fantastical ideas and they can do it and, like, do you know what I mean? And post-editing and stuff like that, they can do it through all their computer-generated shit, do you know what I mean? Like, they can put stuff in, and they make up, and then, like, something like this comes out, and you like people automatically think oh I've seen something like that but I've seen something way better on TV shows and you're like ah, might never get there do you know what I mean like that's a TV show technology can he like mm. like see people saying like oh Star Wars and Star Trek all that ahead of their time fucking pure I obviously do you know what I mean people are going to get ideas for stuff like that but how many things in Star, Star Trek didn't get invented do you know what I mean people say yeah we've, oh, Star- got, we've got phasers have we do you know what I mean? Why are things like people say is mobile phones? They attribute that to Star uh, Star Trek. One of the reasons we went for mobile phones. No, fuck off. Do you know what I mean? Like Star Trek got the idea of mobile phones from the fucking for the fucking previous world wars because radios. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Because how good radios were. Or would you mean I can talk to somebody that's two mile that way with a wee thing? Fuck off. Don't don't tell me Star Trek invented mobile phones. Do you know what I mean? Because walkie talkies were it way before, and they could have easily picked mm-hmm. up they picked it up for mm-hmm. that. And like Star Trek is it's a known fucking thing that Star Trek is um it was written by a guy who served in the Second World War. That's why the ship's called the Enterprise because he served aboard the USS Enterprise, the aircraft carrier. Do you know what I mean? So like he spent time in the army. He do you know what I mean? He seen the radios and stuff like that, and it was like. Jake, he was buying aliens and stuff. Do you know what I mean? It makes sense. A guy that was in the Navy makes a space Navy, writes a space Navy book, just basically puts his ships in space, increases the speed they can move it. Do you know what I mean? Like, you no, know, it's 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 kind of weird how like we go from aircraft and spacecraft. Like, how big does something have to be before it becomes a ship? Like. I don't know, it has to hold a certain amount of people, or, do you know what I mean, like, aye, it has to be able to move, like, I don't know, what is the term? Like, I've just always wondered, like, why did we always go for ships? Like, why, how come we didn't, you know, go like, oh, that's the, the space, not the space plane, you know, the space carrier, you know, or the space flyer? Because you're technically flying, you're not sailing. Because space pretty much is the new ocean. Do you know what I mean? Like, we only think that our world is small because we are used to it in its current form. Do you know what I mean? We, like, aeroplanes that can travel the world and they can get to the opposite side of the world in less than a day's time. 200 years ago, that would have took you six months. Do you know what I mean? Took mm. some maybe took some people a year, maybe two years to make it there, depending on how wealthy they were. Do you know what I mean? So like looking at the ocean back in the day and not being able to see the other bits of land is just like looking at the night sky and not being able to see the planets. Do you know what I mean? Like Isaac Arthur, a YouTube channel I watch, um, he's a science communicator. He talks about all the the science, uh, the technology coming through and all that, right? And one thing he says, he's like. People say that we we couldn't build a solar system wide um, like civilization right now, and he's like, I don't see why we shouldn't try. And he's he makes a fantastic point. People people cite like, oh, you wouldn't be able to phone somebody. I you I no, you wouldn't. The ISS has internet. The ISS is internet because it's so close to it's so close. But but if you see if you put somebody on Mars, you've got a even with light, you've got a I think it's a week, a week it will take the light to get there. Right, and then a week for the light to get back. Do you know what I mean? So you've got a two two week time delay. But think about the Roman Empire. The Roman the Roman Emperor built his empire. Hmm. Guy sitting in Rome sends a letter to Egypt. It takes two weeks to get to Egypt, and then I don't know. Could take even longer to get back. It could get caught in a storm. It could get diverted. Do you know what I mean? It comes back. Sometimes you're talking six week communication time. Rome was the most famous empire and the best empire the world well, had ever look seen. At the- Look at Genghis Khan in his days. He could get a That's letter another good example. from from one end of his empire to the other in twenty five days. Exactly. But that was because he had that messenger going in, you know, night and day. 
like it would be a case of like a mile out of the a mile out of the settlement, he'd blow a horn, they'd have a horse ready for him, and he'd literally just jump from one horse to the other. Mm. Aye, the, there's a lot of st- the Incan Empire was really good at that as well. The way the Incas done it was, you would there would just be people like a guy for each village would be the messenger, and he'd leave at a certain time each day with each message, and he'd run to the next village. Drop the message mm-hmm. off, and that, that would be bum and goodbye. He'd go for the village, he dropped him off, take the messages for there to his village, and that's how it would all work. It's not as if you've got the one guy on a horse going for one side of Genghis Khan's empire to mm-hmm. the other side. Do you know what I mean? But the point is, the communication times are similar if we had to have people sitting on Mars right now. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, I don't see why we've not already tried it. But even then, like. You could shorten that distance mega if you put satellites and. I thought you were going to say on a cable. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. Just tether the earth to Mars. <laughs> what happens when it was just this big cable wrapped in the sun like shit? <laughs> so just, the cable's wrapped in the sun. We need to fucking untangle the cable, man. <laughs> you just you get to the, the sun and untangle it, and it's like a mum. Fuck's sake, why is there so many cables? <laughs> Don't know what one's like, fucking which. <laughs> like, even when you think about it, right? If you placed... Like, satellites, maybe a th- every thousand miles, right? You could shorten that communication time. You could, you could. Um, and what you're... Th- there is points in the solar system where that are called Lagrange points. Each each solar each celestial body has four Lagrange points, and basically, see how like if you imagine gravity is a gra- see how they call it a gravity well. Do you know what I mean? It's mm. like a well, and it's like a valley, and the planet sits in the middle of the valley, and that's where the gravity is. Do you know what I mean? It enters it, and it's like a well. It falls in towards the planet. Well, see each. Because you've got a planet here and the sun, so each one's got a gravity well, so there must, if they're in valleys, there must be mountain peaks places. Do you know what I mean? And they're called Lagrange points, and you can put satellites in them, and they'll constantly follow that celestial body. Do you know what I mean? And we could put we could put a one in, I think it's L2 on Mars, and L4 on Earth, and they'd be really fucking close to each other. Like, you're talking... Mars is, what, 38 million miles away from us or something like that? You're talking they could be 6 million to 8 million miles closer, which could get your time delay done by a couple of days at least. Mm-hmm. So there are, you're right, there is ways to do it. What's Madcap saying in chat? Air travel from a, lig- a linguistic standpoint draws the names of its vehicles from the physics laws and theories that allow vehicles to fly. So calling a spaceship a space plane makes no sense as it's not planing anything. But a spaceship does make sense because the spaceship is floating in the void of space. Maybe, I don't know, fuck off, lol. Madcap, that you went, was... You went and Googled that. You went and fucking Googled that. Aye, but it's a good explanation, Googled it or not. Like, it's a good explanation, cheers for that. That makes a lot of sense, do you know what I mean? It's not a space plane because he's right... A plane is planing the air. Do you know what I mean? It planes it. It cuts through it. Mm. It planes it. So, um, I it's a spaceship because it floats there in the void of space the way that a ship floats in the void of the ocean. That's hundred percent, man. <laughs> Bite my dick fingers, man. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going for bottles. <laughs> I think I think we changed his mind, man. I think he, 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 he went to the toilet and kicked the door, and he's like, ah, "Do you know what? See if I had bottles, I'd have been well sore." <laughs> <laughs> but I like um, I really think the the fact that we should I think we should be trying more things. I really do think we should be trying more things. Do you know? At this I mean? moment, I don't think we should just because we've got a climate crisis to deal with. We should really solve our own home before we, we try and make other ones. We don't have a climate crisis, but, but we don't. <laughs> I don't buy into climate change at all. Like, yes, the climate's going to change, but do you climate know... Climate change Oh, my God. Oh, what am I doing? Oh. Humans might have accelerated that a wee bit, right? But see, that volcano went off a few years and grounded all the planes in Britain. That, no, that, the one in Reykjavik. Was that, it Reykjavik? I, that released more shit into the atmosphere than we had in 100 years. So see if we... Mate, we're like fucking flies trying to say we're killing the bull. Do you know what I mean? Like, we're not killing the bull. We're annoying the bull. The bull's getting a bit annoyed. There's hundreds of flies on it. But we're not going to kill it. Mm. 
Do you know what I mean? Oh no, we've got we've got a climate emergency for us, no for the planet. We're not going to kill the planet. Exactly. That's going to kill and us. The only reason we've got a climate emergency for us is because we decided that we liked an ocean view. Do you know what I mean? We just need to get over the fact that the ocean's going to be like that. It likes the view of our cities and it's going to eat a few of them. We just need to move away, move back. It's not a problem. Do you know what I mean? Like, we could build fucking our colleges. Do you know what I mean? See as the sea starts to claim London, build a fucking dome over it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't see the problem. I don't get how we haven't started colonising underwater with domes yet. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Why have we no done it? Do you know what I mean? Like, obviously we don't need to go to the bottom of the fucking ocean. It could just be off the coasts. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's a nice big flat continental reef there that's about fucking 200 miles. Do you know what I mean? You've got the bay, um, the bay where Port Arthur sits just, just north of North Korea, northeast and northwest of North Korea. <laughs> You've got that. And there's a big art continental shelf that's fucking flat. The, the ocean's wet. I think it's only 180 metres deep for fucking 400 to, eight, to 600 square miles. You could have a fucking underwater city in there. Do you know what I mean? You could have a Venice just sitting there. Do you know what I mean? Fucking build skyscrapers, poking at the water. Fucking. Mm, all vehicles will have to be electric, though, because you, if you're having things in domes, you couldn't have emissions. You like, couldn't have emissions. No. Unless, you, unless you had a very good filtration system. Or just a big I chimney. Imagine, shit that, ton of trees. imagine that there's a smoker's corner in the dome. <laughs> 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 just a chimney out here, man. It's like, yeah, it's. Smokers come though. <laughs> but I like, I really don't. I, the, the, the problem with climate change is, I don't think we'll not be able to save all our cities. That's why people are getting annoyed about it. Do you know what I mean? It's like. Oh, no, I think people are getting annoyed about it because, like, again, you know, this, it will be drastic for the human race and life on Earth. It's like, but me sitting in Glasgow is not going to be ever affected by the uh, ocean. Oh no, when you when it's, it's it's the big corporations and stuff and big big things that need to change. No, you know the little man using a metal straw. You know, sure it's helping, but at the end of the day, <laughs> me using I'm sorry, but me me using this me using this metal straw to snort my cocaine out of you know that's not going to change the fact that Australia's on fire right now. You know, like but right, it's, it's, right see the parts of Australia that are on fire. They're very un- infertile pieces of land, right? What does bushfires do? Oh no, uh, over a billion animals do? have been burned uh, down. Uh, There's no infertile yes, land. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, some uh, animals have been killed. Obviously, they're going to be killed. Uh, and it's a tragedy, right? But fires, why are those things? Do you know what I mean? Wildfires happen. have been happening since the dawn of time. Animals have been dying in wildfires since the dawn of fucking time. Do you know what I mean? Like... That's a shit ton of nutrients that's just went into the ground for the next generation to come in. That's what happens. Do you know what I mean? It's called the circle of life. Where's Elton John when you need them to fucking sing for me? Do you know what I mean? But like, it's like, I get Next the point. Next Elton John on the podcast. I get the point that everybody wants to seem like they're a really nice human being and one of the ways to do that is jump on the fact that some animals were killed in a fire. But see, at the end of the day, it doesn't really affect us. Do you know what I mean? I, it's, no nay, nay, nay species was made extinct. Do you know what I mean? Like, so there's, no, I don't really see the problem. Look, look, Ten right years' now, time, there'll be a massive forest there. Ten years' time, there'll be a massive forest there. People stop losing their shit. Do you know what I mean? It's, I, I, I do think we need to, like, maybe cool down, the, try and cool, cool down the planet for, you know, some sakes of other places. But at the same time, there's a lot of other stuff we need to be doing as well, such as, you know, maybe start thinking about, okay, where else can we colonise? there's a massive we continent done in... There's a massive continent in the, the very bottom of the planet. It's called Antarctica, and we can't live there because it's too cold. Yeah, see if we keep pumping fucking CO2 into this guy, we'll have a whole new continent that's about the size of Europe to go colonise. Aye, uh, but we need to keep it in habitable as well. So, like, like you said, trees, like, you know, there's possibly a chance that all these, um, you know, the place that just burned down, there's going to be a new forest there in 10 years, right? But we need to think about, you know, the amount of trees that we're forests also cutting Forests are growing down. in fucking Chernobyl, for fuck's sake. Do you know what I mean? Like, and people are like, oh, the forests have all burnt down. Aye, they've all burnt down, but at least it wasn't a nuclear fucking disaster. Do you know what I mean? Like, they'll grow back. Fucking, the soil's like that. Yes, I love a good fire. Geez it. Do you know what I mean? We better rain when they go a bad right now, right enough. But soil's like that. Geez it. Geez all your fucking nighter. Geez all your fucking nutrients. Do you know what I mean? Like, geez it. Geez it, geez it. 
so good. It's, mm. it's, it's really good for an ecosystem. Fair enough, the fire's probably bigger than it's ever been. And it's because the world is a wee bit warmer. Do you know what I mean? It's like, no mm. stupid. I'm no, no, I'm the, I don't deny things, like, things, but... Like, we do, like, it's weird because I do believe, like, I think you be controlling the climate, but more so... I know it's like as critically, but it's more so it's comfortable for most things living on Earth. So like we, like you know, look at fucking parts of Australia, like those some parts of Australia. These are habited areas, like in like habited areas. They're now going up to forty degrees, forty five degrees, right? And that was usually only areas that would be, you know, deserts, you know, no wind, no clouds, you know, heat, and it was getting that hot because it was bouncing off the ground. Now it's getting hot. That that hot in root, like urban areas, that's where people are getting concerned. This is and, the only time in history where people have, like, ever since human humans have never been scared ever ever before to go see that city. That's fucked. That's just that's just deconstruct it and go somewhere better. Do you know what I mean? Like it's happened so many <clears> times in history. Yet nowadays we're like, oh, our cities are too big. Do you know what I mean? It's like. But see if the city's literally, if you're literally, like, like, it's harder for the city to be there than it's worth for the city being there. Mm. Fucking move the fucking city. Do you, know, do you know what I mean? Like, they're building a brand new city, a brand new city for scratch. They're founding a settler in South Korea, mate. Don't know where they found the land, but they're building it on the ocean, and they're building an ocean city, and it's going to be the first city that's built in a circle, with a circle layout. Instead of being the grid layer, and it's going to be... No, it's not. It's the fucking... Was it... Well, Atlantis was a circle layer. Aye, but I that's put a mouth, a Atlantis, city. But, but I, I, can't remember, I can't remember the name yet, but it's a, a city being built right now in sort of, uh, South Korea that's going to be completely circle, and it's going to be a, like mostly an ocean city. Do you know what I mean? So why can we not do that? Do you know what I Is mean? Is Dubai not a circle? No, no. Dubai is just... Be, be built in the desert because Dubai's a gold rush city. Oh shit, we need this build it. Oh shit, we need this build it. There's been no thought getting into Dubai when it was being founded. Do you know what I mean? Whereas it was when the oil was starting to be extracted and it was a rich country, then they started planning it. But for most of the time, they were just tents in the desert. I'm I'm looking at what Madcap just put in the chat, and I'm like, that's that's the script from Avatar. Also, they are currently trying to reclass trees as a super organism because they think that all trees are exact, actually all connected by their roots and are actually a colony communicating together. Trees will actually give other other trees nutrients to keep the neighbours alive if they are the same species. I fungus does that as well, and there, there are evidence that even communicate with each other. So we don't even really know how cutting all that shit down will negatively affect the shit, like, what's the consequences? Redwoods are already classed as superorganism. Aye, because they're fucking huge. Mate, literally, there's a redwood... You know there's redwoods in Scotland? There's a redwood in the forest that I take the dog a walk, right? And, oh, holy shit. You, like, I remember the first time I seen it, I was like, what the fuck is that thing? Where did you come from? Do you know what I mean? Like, Did you also look you want to climb it? Mate, I can't climb that thing if I tried. There's, it's just straight up. You're talking, mm. you're talking fucking 80, 100, I don't know, man, it's fucking huge. Weird question, right? Have you ever punched it? Yes. It's so weird, isn't it? It's like a it's soft... fucking sponge. Yeah, it's a spongy bark, I know, I remember pressing it and I'm like, ah, <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> But I yeah, fucking but, like, I remember one. I was... I went to Benmore when I was in primary school, school camp, and Benmore used to be an estate that was owned by this really fucking rich dude. And in his driveway, or driveway, basically where his horse and cart used to come up, he planted all these redwoods, right? Which eventually grew fucking massive, right? And they took us out there and then they showed us all these redwoods. And I remember our, our class going like, <laughs> fuck, like, See, um, it's one of those things. See, I, I can I sometimes get vertigo. I don't get vertigo when I'm standing at the top of things. I get vertigo when I'm standing at the bottom of something very tall. See, when I look up, I get vertigo and I go, oh, feel as if it's got to fall on top of me. And see when, see, when you look up at a redwood, that's when you're really close to it. Like, fucking, oh, you get that feeling. You're just sitting there, oh, please don't. No, it's when you look up and it's actually the clouds moving, give it the illusion. I, then it's, 
Aye, that's what I mean. That's that's the vertigo I'm talking about. It mate, gives you that fucking. You're like, shit. But mm. you know it's not happening, man. And you're right, madcap nature is fucking mental. And fucking, I have seen a few things about um, those forests that are, but I've never heard it spoke about about trees. It's always fungus. It's always fungus that fun- <laughs> There's a forest in Argentina that's like 170 square square kilometers, and the fungus that there's one type of fungus that's all out of the forest, and it's the one thing. It's not all different plants of that fungus. <laughs> it's the one thing. It's fucking mental. But well, I, what was it like? Did you watch um semen the the new uh, the new like grand tour thing? No, I don't like. I don't like them. I really don't it's, like them. There was there was one part of the. I don't like Jeremy Clarkson. He's a big Tory wanker. I fucking hate him. I just can't. Sure he's a diehard Labour voter. No, he's a Tory. He's definitely a Tory, mate. And catch yourself. Mm. But like, um, when you look at uh, like there was a part in it where Jeremy they were... Clarkson's a Labour voter. <laughs> Who is this guy? <laughs> Holy um, shit. But uh, they were like sailing through this river, and it was covered in this like weird. It wasn't more. It was like giant watercress, basically, right? And this one of the and when I say it's like giant, I mean like this stuff was like like that thick. And if you're on a boat, something that thick that is you know that is gonna fuck your boat up. And I remember the uh, like the locals apparently said to them, "Yeah, this wasn't here a week ago." Wow. <laughs> and like things can grow that fast. Mm-hmm. Aye, life is life is insidious. Life is insidious. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Life is like the orcs and fucking and Warhammer. If it touches somewhere, do you know what I mean? Like that's it. It's there now. You can't get rid mm-hmm. of it. Do you know what I mean? Like, like the, one of the best examples is the Asian carp and the American rivers. Do you know what I mean? Those you see them. People on the boats going down a river in America, and these carp are just jumping into their face. And that's <laughs> that's the that's that's Asian carp. Like somebody had fucking released a few into the river in the 1980s and in less than fucking 25 years they were the top fish in that river system do you know mm-hmm. what I mean it's like it's happened all over look at grey squirrels well. like grey squirrels just got into the country and all of a sudden yeah, there are no more other squirrels but uh, grey squirrels we are hench squirrel <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's like fucking have you ever actually looked at a squirrel up close yes one one sat on my windowsill this morning and I remember looking at it going, you're chunky. Aye, they're chunky you're wee fuckers, man. You're a big boy. They're chunky wee bastards. They have massive fucking teeth. They have rodent teeth. They're the, that rodent teeth that continue mm. to fucking grow and they need to eat shit. They need to fucking chew shit when we keep them and get them smaller. Jeremy Clarkson is basically my dad, LOL. Like, exactly the same kind of guy. So I don't even know why people find him annoying. Because to me, he's the standard of what a man is. No, I, I, I really don't like him. Do you know what? I like Jeremy Clarkson more just as like as like a character. Like, I don't think I could sit in a room with him for eight hours. But I could watch him on the TV for a couple. I see what you mean. I see what you mean. If you just, like, accept it as this guy's just a character. But I don't know. I just, I just mm. don't like him. I don't it's like Piers him. Morgan. I can watch him on the TV for an hour. But I'd, I'd, if I saw him in pe- face, I'd punch him. Like, <laughs> if Piers was like that, yo, DM Viper, you can't write my bit for some teen colonisation. <laughs> You'd be like, no. That sounds, that sounds like a really weird game, doesn't it? Teen colonisation. <laughs> He's just that sort of quintessential British cunt. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think that he's still talking right. about the British Empire and who they should be conquering. <laughs> right. thing is, what, what Vanessa said about James May, right? James May is just like... James the May is the one, he's the one that I do like. He's the one that I do he's like. Just, I love him. It's because he's just a stereotypical introvert. Do you he's know, the, like they done a... he's the lovable uncle. He's the lovable he uncle, man. Do you know he what is. I mean? He's the lovable uncle. There was a, a fucking like um, one of the episodes for the Grand Tour where they had to make a viral video on a car, and he made a video that I remember. I didn't even know it was part of the Grand Tour, but I watched it. And what he done was he took a Toyota Prius, I think, right, and got somebody to make a box for it, and he did an unboxing video. On a car, <laughs> but generally one of the most satisfying. Like, do you know when you get an Amazon pack, it's got a weird rippable bit at the sides, you go, and the box opens. Mm. They made that, and it was it literally a giant one. Like 
And I was sitting there going, you're right, that was satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> it's why they hangs, but that's, that's, that's going to be satisfying. It's he's, 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 he's but, weird. It's like, what is like, James May right now is your dad if he found out what YouTube was and started making videos. <laughs> like, that is, like, generally, he's, he's making videos and like, now, I'm going to show you how they made a sandwich in the 70s. Now, there wasn't any of this fancy, you know, sourdough, rye bread. We had two types of bread. There was white and there was brown. So here we go. We got some white bread. And we didn't have butter either. We had margarine. So we spread that on. Then we take some lettuce and then some tomatoes and, you know, a bit of this. And then this sandwich filling. <laughs> Plop that on, cut it down, cuts it in half. He goes, "There you go," and then you get the, like the the crew just eating. Go, yeah. This is just this is the seventies. <laughs> this is the seventies in a sandwich. It's just just like salad, tomato. <clears throat> oh man! Like, but he's, apparently he's doing the show in Japan. Apparently it's very good. I need to. I need. To, I might start watching it tonight. But it called semen. No, this one the. James May one is um, uh, James May in Japan. All right, okay. Um, it's an Amazon to, video. Are we wanting to play a few matches of uh, Jackbox or anything like that? I actually can't because I am um, needing to do college work because I am okay. that kind of dude. Anybody else? Anybody? Madcap's just a wee. Do you know what I think we should start doing on, in, on uh, Indie Scots, right? There's this website called Rabbit and it's where you, you and like a bunch of mates can watch stuff, right? So like, see I if we talk about this. All right, like we should do like indie Scots viewing parties, and we just watch stuff. It's up to you if you want to do something like that, man. You need to watch mm. some good shit, but let's be honest. Indie Scots mm. watch shite shit. <laughs> we should like watch just terrible there's, TV there's, programs. There's, there's some really oh, there's so there's some right bad horror films out there. <laughs> No, it's like um that like I was me and Vanessa were at our friends a couple of uh uh about last weekend. Yeah, I think it was last weekend. And Oh, there's some shit. <laughs> like we watched a Jennifer Lawrence horror film and I can't remember what it was called, but it was literally put it this way, describe to me a generic horror. Zombies. Do you know what I mean? No, like 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 um, teenage girl goes goes to school, fancies this boy, you know, starts hanging out with this boy. This boy's related to, like, his his parents were killed, and his sister was, in you know, the sister killed the parents and stuff, and she he was sent away when he was a kid, you know, all that da 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 da, da right? And then you know, big plot twist, it was him that killed his parents, you know, mm-hmm. and it was just it was it was so generic. Yeah. So bad. Like I'm not gonna like I hate slasher films because I think they're oh Aye. awful. They're all shit. Mm-hmm. Just just checking that the buds are right because she's kept on meds by accident and I don't want her to eat her own leg or something. Fuck's sake! <laughs> <laughs> How shit are Rob Zombie movies? By the way, <laughs> Rob Zombie. Rob Zombie. <laughs> the Rob Zombie is like his own genre. <laughs> I kind of class them. I kind of class them in the same the same vein as an like a naked gun movie. Do you know what I mean? It's that bad yeah. that it's fucking actually great funny. <laughs> do you know? What I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Aye. I but, just want them to make com. Like I wish somebody would make comedy like they used to. Like I want another Spaceballs. I want another like you know Monty Python type another film. scary movie. Yes, <laughs> like things that are just so funny. Aye, like bring like, back some more slapstick, please. Slapstick comedy, give us it, man. No, I'm gonna close my door to six. How do I, how do I not make a movie? Mm-hmm. You're right, you're right. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's, there's some really bad movies that are good because they're bad. Do you know what I mean? But. You shouldn't set out to make a terrible movie in the hopes that it's good because of how bad it was. Do you know what I mean? That's not something you should set out today, isn't it? No. You shouldn't set out, the we're saying Viper is, you shouldn't set out to make a terrible movie in the hopes that it's that terrible that people enjoy it. Oh, you got stuff like Sharknado. 
<laughs> but again, that, that they really hit the mark. Do you know what I mean? Like they, they were trying to make that terrible, terrible, like it's, it's, terribly, terrible, it's almost bad, happening. Good movie. It's almost happened with the Star Wars prequels. Hold on, two six. The Jews guys watch ADGQ. I didn't watch ADGQ. I watched the Destiny raid, and that's it, man. I'm not really a big fan of uh, speedruns and that, but I will watch speedruns of the a few games that I like. I, I usually catch the Metal Gears and stuff like that, but I only caught the Destiny raid this year. I I agree with Madcap. Sharknado is it's it's just it's six six of them now. Uh, exactly, they just try to spam things. But that's the mm. brings back to the point earlier, do you know what I mean? People are just like, oh, spam, 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 spam. Just make, make things that everybody's made before. Everybody's shitting themselves to come up with an original idea. Do you know what I mean? The only people that aren't shitting themselves to do it is fucking Netflix, and people are wondering why they're doing so well. Mm. It's because they're churning out good content. And like, put this way, name another company that would have taken the leap and made the fucking Witcher. Amazon. Amazon. Amazon but, it's only, but Amazon only started doing it because they realised how successful Netflix Yes, Amazon done it in response to Netflix doing it. Yes, you're right. Mm-hmm. And even then, like, Amazon... What's Pulp originals. Fiction if it's between Pulp Fiction or Sharknado? Did Pulp Fiction's no, a much better Pulp movie. Fiction. Mm-hmm. It's a way better movie than Sharknado. Mm-hmm. But, like, yeah, but, like, Netflix... Uh, Way ahead of it. Not only that, they've like they've re- Netflix noticed. Oh look, there's a resurgence in anime. People are starting to watch anime again. Okay, do you know what? We'll make a whole studio in Japan and start making our own. And not only that, we'll make some really fucking good ones. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't. There's care. a reason Netflix is fucking flying so high. You're right. You're totally mm-hmm. us. And when they do do a remake, they actually be original about it. Because let's be real. Voltron was one of the best TV series, animated TV series to come out of that decade. Like, I'm sorry, Voltron was amazing. <laughs> Anyone who has, I'm sorry, people like I'm, I'm, I'm telling trust this. I don't, I don't, I don't know if you've watched, but you need to go away and just, just, just watch Voltron. Voltron. So good. Voltron. Yeah. Cool. I'll give that a watch. Wasn't Legendary Voltron Defender. Made. It's, it's very, um. It is very Power Rangers, like it is. And it's, there it comes it way, like it's 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 a, it's a, it's a team of people who pilot these lions, and these five lions come together to make Voltron. But it's like it's more just like the character development, the story arcs, the oh, it's all just fucking great. <laughs> well, mate, we've been de- we've done a new and a half tonight. We have. We've done an hour and a half. It's half past ten, so we're going to wrap up. Um, I think we should have like a. Should yeah. we have like a weird kind of like a, um, like a sign off, like you know those like old. Like, it's it's nine o'clock here at the radio station. I hope you have a good night from us <laughs> and from everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what I was going to say is, Yaldi's no streaming tomorrow because his PC finally packed in. He's getting a new one, pretty soon, but. Your man Viper's going to be covering them on the Monday nights until he can get that. Hopefully, it's yeah. just the one week. Hopefully, it's just the one. I'm week. going to uh, tomorrow. I'm probably I've not decided if I'll be doing The Witcher or Jedi Fallen Order. Well, I'll be playing The Witcher on Wednesday. All right, I'll do I'll do Jedi Fallen Order then. Cool. Um, and Kelly's on on Tuesday. If you've not been following Kelly recently, guys, by the way, like I'm just going to put Kelly's uh, wee link. Kelly is currently doing a daily stream. We are, he's playing Wii Fit, right? And he does half an hour to 45 minutes of Wii Fit every day. It is probably one of the most wholesome, funny streams you'll catch. <laughs> <laughs> that cat's bent its tail right round about your head as if you're wearing a fucking hat. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Check out Kelly's channel. He's doing it, it's about six o'clock every night, between six and seven every night, he's starting up his stream today's Wii Fit. Should we have a, should we have a quick look at some of the clips? Because, yeah. oh my god, it is amazing. <laughs> Kelly is pretty wholesome, this is true. Kelly is pretty wholesome, this is true. Right, quick, get us some mm. Kelly clips. Hurry Kelly up. is the sexy man. The sexy man. I, I see when I was watching his stream, but that's all I could think was the fat bastard scene with the sexy man. Sexy man can. <laughs> there was, there was one like yesterday, he tried, tried this, he tried the zen, uh, the zen, like, meditating. 
was great. Right, what ones are we going to do? What ones are we going to watch? We fit with a glass of wine. Unfit middle-aged Scotsman. There we go. <laughs> Once you're out, once I'm out, once I'm out, it's all wrong. I generally hope this is what boosts Kelly to start. Again. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is not going well for him. Come on! <laughs> you see how beetroot his face is, can't you? Oh. <laughs> you know, this is just proof that you don't need good graphics to have Maybe a good... A... Unbalanced. But there you go, I like Kelly's stream is well worth a check out, man. Oh wait, is that is that him playing is that him playing oh is that him doing the yoga? I've got it now, I've got it now, I've got it now. It's back on the same one. Why did it do that? Oh no, I missed one. Oh, because that was his uh, that was a clip from his stream. Out, it's all wrong. I think that was the actual stream, but he's he's got like ones of him doing yoga and uh The Hula oh, Hoops uh, is the uh, one uh, I enjoy, uh, man. Uh, the court of a, a female. <laughs> 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 He's like that. I chose bottles. Do you want Challenge. to see them? <laughs> and on that note, guys, thank you very much for watching the podcast this week. It's been a pleasure talking to you and a pleasure talking to you, Viper. Be sure to check out the Unmonetizables podcast on the Alexa. Chronicles. Lightscreen. That's our sister, sister podcast. Okay. So check them out, guys. Links are in the description if you're watching on YouTube. And thank you very much. And we'll see you all next time. Good night. Day your outro, Viper. And from all of us here. <laughs> and from all of us. And from all of us here. Good night. We'll build this network on Scots with so we'll build this Alexa. network Lights on Build this network on Scots with Alexa. Soul. Alexa. 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 Tetsu. Sorry, I don't know that one.